So good evening, good morning, everyone. Uh, a good news is that actually I almost found the um, the error I have with Science Spacey. The bad news is I'm still working on it, uh, doing some testing. Uh, it's I mean the the details or. On that, uh, you can find uh, in data Slack channel. Um, so yeah, that that's all. That's everything what I have to say. Uh, not much. Uh, it's something wrong about uh, about the behavior of uh, science space in the loop or in uh, when it is used multiple times in different processes. But I'm, I think it's quite weird, but still. Uh, because sometimes I got results, sometimes not, regarding QMLS, so. If you want to comment on that. <laughs> sure. So Lucas, quick question, like the code you're running, is it in sync with the GitHub repo you posted? Yeah, it's exactly okay. the same. I mean like, uh, first it's the same, second it's uh, copy paste from the Brandon node. I mean, regarding mm -hmm. UMLS extraction, et cetera, it's nothing changed. I mean like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a functional, it, it was, was more about refactoring, uh, about the data frame, how we, uh, how we parse different parts of uh, those models into our data frames, things like that. Uh, and a spacey model is a high level model. You, you don't change much about them. I mean, like you need just to extract right entities from right part of the model. That's all, I mean, that's not a big science. Uh, yeah, I, I just I was asking just because like I like I want to jump on it and to recreate the problem. Yeah, we actually, I, I, shared, same, I right? shared also uh, a one or two uh, links to the issue to the side with issues with science spacey, and there was a person a couple of months ago complaining also about printing of uh, UMLS and entity recognition entries from the model that uh, didn't happen i mean like the the printing work like the the supposed uh supposedly printed uh, entities uh weren't displayed um so and then the problem disappeared so the, the at least as far as i i i could uh, uh dive into uh, into the site with the on the, in the into the page with the issues of, uh, of science spacey. Uh, those things uh, do not let uh, reproduce themselves uh, in some systematic way. So I don't know what's the cause uh, because now I'm sometimes I, I got I, I got some UMLS entries, sometimes not. So uh, so still working on that. Uh, what is very frustrating, to be honest. Uh, yeah, now for instance, it was, it's like, sometimes it generates, okay, I, I, I need take, a, 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 I need some hours probably just to, to, uh, to defragment this into smaller pieces and and uh, I think uh, I can find a solution for that. I, I, I must find a solution. Do you have any questions about, I mean like there's not, nothing to ask, it's more, uh, yeah. I know I'm quite dis disappointing, but No, you're doing, you're doing hard stuff, Lukas. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, not hard stuff. Is I mean, like we are somehow like one week uh, behind like, after the deadline. Let's say so, pr a pr the promised day and not deadline but for uh, V19, and it's already V22. Probably this week, next week, we will have something like V20 something. Uh, 
the hope is that, that maybe there will be no, there will be no so many changes between them in terms of structure. Uh, Yes, and if you if you if you don't have anything to do, as already mentioned on the last call, uh, Slava has a lot of work uh, for machine learning people and for data analysis. Uh, for the stuff we are uh, crawling from from the from the web. I mean, different data sets about COVID nineteen, and Slava is already on the. Slava? Oh, okay, he has disappeared. Um, I could quickly chime in over here. So what we we need to do for all of the data sets is we need to start classifying them into different groups. So for example, the same thing we, we can actually, uh, since search engine, we're more of an NLP team over here. So first we have uh, a set of work is just to essentially create uh, data collections. So for example, classify, is the paper a clinical trial or not? And depending again, which team you spoke with, they have different group of like articles they work with. And building a classifier will be a really great way to kind of automate and then scale the efforts. Uh, this is just kind of like more NLP oriented tasks. Then for Dataverse, right, we essentially collect everything that is everything that you can put into data frame and everything that is stacked related to COVID-19 we kind of get it into our dataverse so you could imagine there's a lot of data sets like that and again some of them is like useless some of them is something interesting so again a lot of kind of like this classification tasks so like what type of attributes to put automatically or like what tags to put into data sets from our perspective in terms of, oh, this is like time series data, boom, and things like that. So we have a lot of kind of, this is like the atom of a task is just simply, okay, can you build a classifier for our data sets on a dataverse and, and, and make it in a like for some good fashion? And since we also have a, we're forming a data curation team and data hub, then we also will kind of validate the results. We could create a validation data set, et cetera. So it could be, you know, supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised system. So again, a lot of interesting tasks over there. So if somebody wants to, to jump on it right now, it's a good time. I can help out with some of that. Should I get in touch with Slava? Yeah, Slava is joining now our conversation, but it's like uh, maybe there's some problems with the connection. Just just text him directly, Mary. If if you okay. Uh, yep, sounds good. Um. Uh, okay. Uh, other uh, announcements, wishes, dreams. Yeah. Uh... I've been I've been working on sort of doing the sanity check that we've been talking about. Uh, it took a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I finished a pretty, you know, I think I finished a lot of it. I haven't gotten to the to the weird sentences part yet, but yeah. I did manage to basically do a big sort of a big comparison between the metadata and the actual data. Um, so it'll basically log a bunch of stuff saying like there's this many records there's these many of these types of records it'll say if uh, record records have multiple uh, documents associated with them then I also went and checked the title because the metadata includes a title and an abstract uh, uh, field so I went and checked those and I checked those against what's actually in the files uh, and I and I did like fuzzy matching for that and I reported that to plus, I put everything in a JSON where it'll be like, here's the, here's the paper's ID, and then it'll be, here's the title in the metadata, and here's the title in the actual file, and here's the partial and full ratio between them, uh, and like how alike they are. And if it's like really low, you'll see an error. Plus, uh, if, uh, like I'll, for example, a lot of them for the, for the, uh, for the PDF parses, 
um, they're just empty, right? So there will be a lot of situations where uh, we will have just empty abstracts or empty titles. In uh, in the in the JSON file in the JSON parse, but then uh, inexplicably you'll see that abstract exist in um, in the metadata or the other way around. So there's stuff to, like so it was a sanity check plus a bit of a quality check of the data, and uh, I know it doesn't sound like the most complicated thing in the world, but it was uh, it was a lot yeah. more frustrating than uh, than no I'm no it, it is complicated. <laughs> That data is not the cleanest. Yeah. So, but but it works. I did it on I did it on V20, which is the same as V19 in terms of what the actual data is, and then I also did it on V25. So it works for both. Okay. Yeah, it still seems like to just to to expand upon what you said, catch uh, up tour. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the I observe I'm observing that for some of the smaller uh, science space models like not mm -hmm. this large one but the the four or five smaller ones for ontologies some ontologies uh, like like cat categorize things that are not necessarily they are not supposed to belong to those categories like mm -hmm. uh, some chemical uh, uh, chemical substances you uh, there are names or geographical names like the towns or uh, countries or ethnic cities uh, described as chemical compounds what is i mean like it, of course it's the inherent inherent problem of uh, of the, those models we cannot do much about it uh, like unless developing our own models yeah uh, but then is the question uh, how much are those categories those different categories are helpful yeah um in in any case uh if if since i think my thing my since i think my thing works for the newest one if too much in terms of the structure of the data doesn't change in the next releases uh, it's possible to just keep running the notebook and it'll it'll spit out it'll spit out basically a text file which is a log of you know a bunch of things uh, plus it will spit out a JSON saying you know title abstract comparison title abstract comparison of every yep. single thing. Uh, um, so yeah I think it's it's a it's a good way of being able to sort of you look at the log file you'll see like this is what the data we're working with and it does some sort of text confirmation verification stuff to an extent. Obviously, I couldn't do the whole the whole thing. I wasn't about to compare the text of every single you know PMC file to its potentially equal uh, JSON or uh, PDF because that would probably take my computer a million years. But yeah, that's sort of where I'm at. And speaking of the Slava stuff. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish the the other two things I'm working on for the data quality check, but I definitely wanna wanna help out with the, with the Slava stuff too. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm seeing Slava uh, trying to join us all the time. I don't know what what's happened. Okay. Right. So great job, Hachatur. What I think like. So right now you're just only checking, right? That for example, abstract in a PMC JSON file is empty because it was already in metadata or something. I remember actually. Oh, well, in well, FAQ, so I didn't check. I didn't check abstracts for PMCs because I mean abstracts don't have PMCs. But but uh, but yeah, you get that's the idea is um, was to look at what the metadata says was, uh, for example, the title of a paper, and then you look at sometimes there'd be like four or five files associated with it, right? There'd be a PMC file uh, and then there'd be like three or four PDFs associated with that. So I'd have to check all yes. of them. Um, yeah, yeah. So I remember like there was some discussion or maybe it was in FAQ or somewhere. So mm -hmm. for, early on, there was actually like this situation when in metadata abstract is like field is empty because it's like there is a full text JSON. So it was kind of like, oh, just go and take it there. But then if 
if it's not abstract, is not in some of the JSON, because again, they could have this multiple PDF recognized, then abstract could be like, abstract is missing in the JSON, but it was in metadata because they had it from somewhere else. So there was okay. like this definitely huge mess. So the work you did now, on top of it, essentially could, could kind of expand on it and actually build this logic of, you know, taking the best abstract, the most clean from whatever version we have, you know, something like this routine. So, I mean, I'm not saying like you to do it, but we could definitely package it as this task of like, okay, here is the sanity check and like essentially build a pre-processor of Core 19 before even going into our, all of this entity recognition pipelines, et cetera. I think it will be, something very interesting and something yeah. that we could actually pin back to AI2 folks kind of like guys here is we have this pre-processor of your stuff so maybe well, well, yeah. throw the, it at people who want it the, the whole reason i started to, i even went that direction was i was uh i was working with the data in mongo and i realized i had no idea where the title or the abstracts came from i didn't know where that processing came from i didn't know if it came from the metadata if it came from you know the actual files um, so there is, and then when I saw that, you know, there's multiple, for example, like PDFs associated to a, to a certain, um, record, it's like, well, which one of these is actually the one with the full text we're looking for. So I figured if it has the best, uh, say title and abstract compared to the metadata or something like that, then you're like, okay, this is probably the right paper. This is probably the paper we should be looking at instead of, you know, the other four or five that could exist in that record. Uh, yeah, so the, I, I remember like the logic was, and this was what Brandon was following, essentially mm -hmm. is here is metadata. Then if there is PMC JSON, which means it, it, it wasn't recognized from PDFs, it was kind of created by some other way, I guess from latex or whatever the submission to the publishers is, is happening. So, if PMC is there, okay, PMC JSON is used. Then if that is missing, okay, then you look at, you know, uh, PDF JSON if it's there. And I think it was just taking the first one or whatever was in the list. Oh, hold on, during that time, there was structure is slightly different. Yeah. So, but anyway, so essentially it was like just metadata, if JSON files are missing, then PM priority was to PMC JSON, and if not, then like, you know, whatever was the first PDF JSON, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. So very like, I mean, the name structure, but it was kind of, it probably works that way anyways. Mm -hmm. But now what you're describing, or at least like what I'm hearing is like, okay, what if we have, we don't have PMC, but we have like three PDF JSON. We need to take the best of all of them, right? Because Pretty much. in one document, so, the, so it's exactly like this is essentially the task that we could form and just to see if somebody wants to take it is this given so will be great H2, if you could create kind of like statistically like how many files are like this like how many articles we have multiple pdf JSONs, but nothing else obviously only oh I, I i have yeah. that uh i have that ah, in, okay. a, in a in a log file like for example if i open one up for chord 19 it'll say like um this is this how many records have multiple uh pdfs attached to it and in it's like 2500 um or it, it'll be like how many how many files have discrepancies between what the metadata says and what the json says it's like 9000 it's so it's right there like where which ones have problems with the pdfs which ones have problems with the pmcs um where's you know are there discrepancies with the abstracts a bunch of numbers are there i actually put so i zipped up uh the the bigger files and put it up on on github um so you guys can check it out but it is a, still a bit of a bit of a download so i'm trying to figure out a way where you guys don't have to run the whole notebook but you can still get the at least some of the information because it takes a while to actually run the notebook i wanted to make it faster but it still takes like half an hour to run the thing because that's to open every file But yeah, to kind of you know you run it and then just create that log, push it to the repo, 
kind of like mm -hmm. latest run or some like uh, run date or some so just kind of like keep that lock in the repo as well so people won't rerun it or something okay uh, and so it looks like it's a thousand paper with that type of problem another like eight thousand of papers with that problem etc yeah. mm -hmm. so it's it's a solid number from like one perspective so we'll definitely we'll fix that but at the same time right we're like right now the, the biggest concern is essentially what Lukash is working on just kind of like we need to get UMLSs right like okay. that, that link that working etc so in terms of priorities what I see so this is like I don't want us to caught up like kind of oh let's fix this type of stuff before proceeding mm -hmm. right so in terms of workflow it just it's great that we have those numbers now mm -hmm. the priority number one is you know kind of like make the sure that like, our new pipeline is working mm -hmm. and then since all of these are like these modules we could actually start kind of like you know wait a second let's revisit this so what do we do with papers with this type of you know issues in the input data let's yeah. build a preprocessor for them and so on and so on and then mm -hmm. we'll kind of could iterate quickly so like guys don't be distracted by uh the fact that there are issues in the data like it's always build quick and dirty pipeline again we already did that brandon did that now we're kind of automating all of this and then with all of this we're now starting to see in all of the areas where things are not working well right mm -hmm. oh the data itself is like kind of not very clean like this umls link are kind of not stable okay we'll fix that then something else and so on and so on but eventually we'll iteratively make everything you know battery smooth etc yeah um so i'm pro uh, also i'm probably going to take about a, a day or two off from from working on this stuff right now because i have to catch up on some on some uh some other stuff i'm doing um but after that i'll i'll jump into the to the thing we discussed about the tables and then the also weird sentences i'll jump into those and then once those are done hopefully i can get a chance to work on the stuff slava's doing okay sounds good uh, still some questions uh i think that we can slowly uh close today's session if there is no questions and more or less everyone knows uh, where she he is, can help somebody else or to improve or to contribute uh, so there yeah, uh, uh, i would like to thank you uh, uh, have a bit more passion passions uh, with with my job uh, i hope to deliver this i don't know maybe tonight tomorrow I, I, it's difficult to say because if it's the, if the process is not stable uh yeah that will be quite difficult to run this on on the whole data set of 60,000 papers uh, because if some something broke in like in the in the meantime uh then it would be not tractable um uh, yeah i mean yeah, I, I would like to to have it uh, to have a clear situation about uh, this error I have now. So yes, uh, oh, yeah. so, so, uh, I'm pretty sure we will all solve this. So like, yeah, yeah, I mean, should be optimistic. And like, just to, to set like a quick comment regarding like you, Lukas mentioned that oh, you know, we're like week behind or something. Yada yada. Like, don't be let down by it because I recently saw some like uh, research done. In, in, in Silicon Valley amongst like big tech companies. And the results are like this. People like underestimate by like factor of three, four time span, like needed to, you know, accomplish things. And again, we're talking about like big data companies that track everything and trying to optimize, you know, this type of execution pipeline. And even with their resources, their tools, et cetera, three, four, factor so don't don't worry that you know I'll don't tell me i have a deadline on friday 
and three days is really <laughs> and counting. Exactly. So uh, counting down. <laughs> as long as we have like progress every time, we should be super like in a happy mood. So dopamine should, you know, dopamine hit should happen like every time you do even small stuff because it's about momentum, not about like. I mean, it's about hitting milestones, yes, but it's not about milestones at that time, right? Unless we're racing somebody else, then it's a different story. But then there were like some other uh, things that our brain does to us that will, will help with that if we're racing somebody. But... Okay, good. Thank you, uh, Anton. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think we, we can uh, conclude. This meeting. Uh, so uh, we see um, we see us at uh, I think uh, on on Thursday the same I think the same time the place also the same uh, and yeah and good luck with uh, your your projects your commitments and yeah any any questions further comments on Slack as usual. So have a nice day a nice evening. Nice night and see ya somewhere on Slack. Later, guys. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>